Welcome to Connect the Dots, a podcast where we unlock the stories that connect each and every one of us. Hosted by me, Zach Day, in partnership with Connect Nashville. How do you connect? All right. Hey, Dalton. How are you doing today? Doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Thanks for joining us on this podcast today. Um, maybe I'll just start by giving you a quick background on on this pod and what we're tra- all about here at Connect, and then we can jump right in. Is that cool? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Cool. All right. So um, we're representing a brand that I built called Connect, um, and this serendipitous when we were watching the tournament this year and saw you flash all up and up on our screens. We said, you know, we got to figure out a uh, <laughs> we got to figure out a way to get you on one of our podcasts, and we do this podcast called Connect the Dots, and. And we built this residential brand, which is really about you know connecting people um, in lots of different ways, and, and we built it really focusing on the young people that are transitioning in life. So we have a lot of people who are graduating college and moving to a big city and looking for a place to live. Maybe they're going to grad school or starting their first job. We have a lot of people who are starting businesses with us, um, and the, the 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 buildings we built are a little unique in where we build a bunch of co-working space and community space on top of just the residential units and our units are fully furnished so people don't have to think about what am I, you know, I have to go and buy furniture now. Um, so we take a lot of the guesswork out of moving and, and we make their transitions a lot easier and we have this built-in community where we do social programming and we teach wellness and fitness classes and so the whole idea is to help people through these large transitions in life, particularly young people, and helping them and being a support system for them and in, in whatever they're doing. And so, you know, when we saw you, um, you know, play this tournament and we saw your name and, and by the way, how do you, how do you pronounce your last name? Connect. It is, it is connect. So, okay. Yes, we, were, we were all talking about it and wondering if that's how you pronounce it. And so it, it is very, um, you know, serendipitous that we saw you, you know, playing in the tournament and said, you know, and then also at university of Tennessee, we have a building, in Nashville, Tennessee, and so we just thought it would be great to see if you would join us on this pod. So thank you for agreeing to to be on the pod with us today. And I think, you know, I'd love to, for this this audience, I think, who listens to this pod is, is you know, people in our community, our members, our, our tenants. We have members who are also members of Connect that don't live with us. So we have both residents who are members and we have non-residents who are members who maybe co-work with us and hang out and use our fitness facilities and hang out at our pool and things like that. Um, and then we're constantly bringing in more people to our community. And so I think, you know, as I think about your story and what I saw, um, I love to just talk about, you know, stay with this topic of transitions and, and talk about, you know, it seems like over the last few years, you've had quite a few transitions in your life. You know, um, as I read about your early life and in, in going to Northeastern and then transitioning to, to University of Tennessee and now everything you have going on um, with the NBA draft, I'd love to just kind of hear your story from your perspective and maybe just give us a little bit of a, um, you know, your backstory from, you know, from college, you know, after post high school to, to where we are today. That'd be really great. Yeah, well, I'd like to say thanks for having me on the podcast. And yeah, coming out of high school, I was 6'3", 170. And yeah, I went to junior college route, chose uh, junior college. And <clears throat> sorry, it was kind of like the best time for me. I feel like I uh, met a lot of great people, a lot of brothers that I talked to every single day. And it was great. Grew three inches in junior college and gained over 25 pounds. And then wow. I went to Northern Colorado, played there for two years, had a blast there. And then <clears throat> went to Tennessee, gained 20 more pounds and <laughs> took off from there. It was a great time playing in front of you know, the state and representing. Wow. Wow. Well, let's just stick there. I mean, you moved around quite a bit in college, even to get to the University of Tennessee where you are. You know, can you just tell us about, you know, how do you prepare yourself for those kind of changes? I mean, it's, it's, it's hard enough, you know, for people who we talk to that are a part of our community to go from living at home maybe with their parents to going to a four-year education and then trying to figure out what does life look like after. Can you just tell us about your, you know, life plan and how you kind of went from one school to then play at another and then ended up where you ended up? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it was something different, especially because, you know, high school, you live with your parents. And then I went to a junior college. I was about 
hour and a half away from home, so that was something different, and got to quite a bit, I didn't get used to it at first, but, you know, had to adjust, and then went to Northern Colorado, that was only 45, so it was a lot closer, I'd make tons of weekend stops, just to say what's up, and get some home-cooked meals, and then, you know, went to Tennessee, that was far away, 18 and a half hours away, we had to make the drive, and it was, it was different, but... Also, I just had a blast there, but I would say the main thing is you just got to kind of just relax and you get to find what you really like to do and you get to just find a lot of new hobbies that you wouldn't think of. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's amazing. I, maybe just to add on to that, you know, you know, in these transitions, particularly as, as you talk about your path to getting to where you are, um, you know, it takes a lot of tenacity, um, hard work. Um, I think, I, you know, particularly for people who, who would be listening to this pod, I think everyone's going through these transitions in life and figuring out what they want to do, or maybe they're creating something and they have a new business or a new job, or they're in grad school looking to do, go somewhere. Um, how do you kind of stay, how, how do you prepare for that? And how do you, you know, how, how would you think about your time and preparing for the next step and stage in your life? Yeah, um, I would say what I would do is just simply call a friend or, I mean, I talk to my parents quite a bit, so just staying in touch with them, kind of making me uh, feel like I'm at home, but from a from a distance. And just like I said earlier, just trying to find some new hobbies. Like I got into a lot of movies and playing a lot of video games throughout my time and just meeting new friends and hanging out with those type of friends and just you kind of just get lost that you're not too far away from home, but you are. Yeah. Look, that's that, you know, that the community aspect of what you talked about is what we are trying to create at Connect. I think we do a pretty good job, but the whole idea is about, you know, bringing people together who may be far from home. Uh, we have a lot of people who are just moving to the city that we're in. Um, they're, again, you know, going through a transition in life. And so I think building that community, that network, we're always trying to get better too. So we want to continue to hear from people on like, how do we make their lives easier? Um, how do we bring other people together, create an environment where they can make friends easy? And so that's a lot of what we do at Connect. Um, and so um, what, everything what you said, I think will, will resonate to the audience and certainly will to, to our, um, our staff that, that works at Connect and really creates these experiences every day. Um, Maybe just getting into some some questions, um, just more kind of direct personal questions. Just you know, you watching you in the tournament was was fantastic. Um, you know, you had some career highs. Um, I think towards the end of the season and then through the tournament. Um, how did you you know find yourself preparing for these high pressure moments? Because I would say I would think that going through what you went through and getting to this to the stage that you got to. Uh, in the tournament is probably a dream come true. I don't want to put words oh, yeah, in your mouth, sure. but then how do you how do you then prepare for that those high pressure moments to really get yourself to succeed in those moments? You know, there's probably a lot of you know nerves um, that you have to deal with during those those high pressure moments. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of nerves, you know, going out there and playing in front of big crowds every single night, and not only just the big crowds, but you know, people are watching on TVs. So it's definitely you know, something that you got to get used to. But also, for me, it was something real cool to be able to do that because I know, like, I got tons of friends and family to watch, or that are watching and, you know, my teammates, friends and families are watching. So we all kind of just kind of relax as a team and play the music to get us relaxed and, you know, just put on a show and have some fun just going out there and, you know, hearing the crowd go crazy and scream is something real fun, especially, you know, when they play Rocky Top. <laughs> uh, they scream at the top of their lungs. So, I mean, we just kind of just relax and have fun and try to do what we do best out there on the court. It's great. Well, you, you, did, a, you did a fantastic job and it was really fun to watch you. Um, as you prepare for the next stage in your life, you know, sticking with this theme of transitions, um, you're, you're going to the, to the NBA draft. Can you tell us a little bit about how you are now thinking about your next stage and preparing for, for that part of your life? journey yeah it's definitely something different i mean i'm 60 days out probably from the nba draft and 
I still don't know where I'm going to live or where I'm going to end up. So it's definitely kind of nerve wracking, but at the same time, it's going to be really fun and a fun experience. I'll have one of my friends coming out with me to move with me and, you know, kind of make it feel like I'm at home, just got someone to be around. But it's going to be fun just, you know, just relaxing out where I'm out in Miami working out. So, you know, I got me and Josiah, we've been working out here and just trying to have the most fun before uh, the big pressure of the before. draft. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's really great. Maybe um, if you can just give us a little bit, if you reflect on your basketball journey so far, maybe, you know, do you have any advice for young, aspiring athletes? Maybe they're graduating high school at this juncture. Maybe they're at a junior college today, aspiring to be where you are today. you have any advice for them? Yeah, I'd say the biggest advice is just making sure that you love the game and working hard at it. You know, you got to do stuff that when people aren't watching, when the doors are closed and when people are sleeping, you got to be putting it in work. And that's what I uh, built myself on is just staying in the gym, being a gym rat as much as possible and just enjoying it and doing what you love. I mean, you put those two together, you could accomplish a lot of things. And it's real inspiring to hear like little kids come up to me saying that I inspired them and seeing them wear my t-shirt or a jersey or something, it pushes me to become more motivated and do what I do. That's great. That That is really great advice, I think, for regardless of what, where you're going in your career, I think for, for tic, particularly for this audience, I think that's a, that's a, those are good lessons and, and thoughts. Um, maybe, um, just uh, getting into some, maybe some some pers personal stuff. Any any? What's your favorite comfort food? Comfort food? Yeah, it's gotta be it's gotta be a steak, a nice ribeye. Steak. Oh Love wow. It. Okay. Yeah. Uh, whenever I see that on the menu, I have to get it. All right. Outside of playing basketball, what's your favorite pastime? The like pastime, what do you do I'll for say, fun? I would say probably hanging out with some friends or for sure watching a movie or playing some video games with my friends. But those two. What's your favorite, what's your favorite video game? Favorite video game. Man, that's hard. There's tons of great ones, you know. I got, obviously uh, grew up playing 2K all the time. And then I would say probably COD or Fortnite. I play a lot. Probably less Fortnite now. A lot more COD. Okay. All right. Um... And is that something that you do, do Dalton, to like keep keep connected with your your pals, your friends that you've grew up with or you went to school with, or maybe you're no longer around? Yeah, and definitely, you know, you uh, get to talk to them when you don't get to see them for like I haven't been home in over a year, so you know I haven't got to see them. But playing with them on the video games and you know talking to them every single day definitely uh, makes it a lot easier. Yeah. I bet. Um, give me a give me a funny story, maybe a, a, a funny apartment story. So, like, you know, we're in the apartment industry. We're trying to always, like, you know, we're trying to do better and be innovative in this space. But I'd love to hear about a story that you know of you trying to find an apartment. Any any kind of funny stories of you as you moved around a bunch? Hmm. I mean, that's gonna be interesting. I had a couple of them, you know. Uh, I had one of my good friends come out with me to Tennessee, and you know, just having him there definitely we had some funny moments. But one good moment, I would say, I don't know. It, I wasn't there, but during the Michigan State game, he said that he lit off some fireworks at every single point I scored at Michigan State. Oh, there you go. So he said nice. that. He, was on top of the balcony after every point after the game he's lit off 28 fireworks so <laughs> he said the, the people that were annoyed so i say that was the funniest moment even though i wasn't there okay all right um i assume uh you're you're watching the nba finals is there anyone um in particularly this this uh, these finals that you that you've watched anyone that you would aspire you want to aspire to be anyone that you look up to um it doesn't have to be anyone that only players in this in this finals but i just i feel like it's a appropriate question at this time no uh, yeah um i would have to say probably luca or anthony edwards between those two guys uh katie's my guy but 
Anthony Edwards knocked him out early, so I'd definitely say Luca or Ant would be my two guys that I uh, I've been watching real closely throughout these playoffs. Yeah, were you surprised um, with how far either of those teams have gone, or you, was it was it expected? Um, I think it was a mixture. Definitely think a couple of other teams were. Uh, I think the Nuggets were going to go longer than for sure the Timberwolves, but. Happens. Basketball is uh, a sport where nobody knows. Anything could happen. Exactly. It's one of the it's one of the reasons why it's so fun to watch. Um, give us, you know, as we wrap up here, Dalton. Um, you know, maybe as as we always look for advice from people who are in life transitions. You know, what would you look for in your next kind of living situation? As you're thinking about moving to a new place as a young person in the NBA. Um, what would you look for in a community that you would want to, you know, where you would want to live? No, um, I'm not sure. I mean, I just want something. I'm a real quiet guy, so I mean, I'd want something real quiet, not nothing too crazy. But also at the same time, I want a good community that people that I'll know next door and across the hallway or something from an apartment. I'll definitely know them and you know, create uh, new friends and bonds that I never met before. So that'd be one thing I'm definitely looking forward to. That's great. Well, Dalton, I wish you the best of luck in your transition to the NBA and we'll continue to watch you and cheer for you. And you're always welcome to come to any one of our Connect buildings anytime you'd like and use our spaces as you see fit. We'd love to see you at one of these buildings soon. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Definitely welcome.